Thank you for joining us today for a brief overview on how to set up DataCore's Virtual SAN with Microsoft Hyper-V. The intention of this demonstration is to cover the basic concepts related to configuring SAN Symphony V as a virtual SAN within a Microsoft Hyper-V environment. It is important to note that in addition to Hyper-V, any application or service that can be installed on the Windows operating system alongside of SAN Symphony V can take advantage of SAN Symphony's rich feature set. Let's proceed with the demonstration. Here I have a clean installation of Windows Server 2012 R2. I have already installed the DataCore SAN Symphony V engine on the system to save a few minutes during this demonstration. Let's start by opening the SAN Symphony V console located on the desktop. And here we'll log into the local host with the default credentials. The first step is to set the caching allocation value. By default, SAN Symphony V will take 60 to 70% of the available RAM for cache. Since this system will also host Hyper-V services, we want to adjust this value to leave enough RAM for the virtual machines that will run co-resident with SAN Symphony. Start by clicking on the data core node in the server group list to the left. Then click on the settings tab in the middle window and open the cache settings section. Click on Set Cache Size 2. This will allow you to set a user-defined value for the cache allocation. In this demo, I have a system with 128 gigabytes of RAM. I will use a cache setting of 32 gigabytes, leaving 96 gigabytes free for Hyper-V virtual machines. When done, click Apply. A restart of the SAN Symphony V engine is necessary for these new settings to take effect. Simply right-click on the data core node in the server group list to the left and select Stop Data Core Server. Confirm that you're ready to stop the service on this node. When you see the status of the node change from running to stopped, now right-click on the node again and select Start Data Core Server. This will start the engine with the cache settings we just set a moment ago. The next task is to create a data core disk pool and corresponding virtual disk. We have a single RAID 5 disk available to us under the physical disks node in the tree to the left. To use this disk in a pool, simply right click on the disk and select Add to Disk Pool, and then Create Disk Pool. The Create Disk Pool screen appears. Enter a disk pool name and click Create. The disk pool name, like most things in the SAN Symphony V console, can be renamed later if necessary. Now that we have a disk pool, we can create a virtual disk. To create a virtual disk, right-click on the Virtual Disks node in the tree and select Create Virtual Disks. Here we're presented with a three-step wizard. The first step, of course, is to give the virtual disk a name. And for now, we will create a single instance of the virtual disk. But if you're deploying into a production environment, you will likely create a mirrored disk here. Next is to enter the size and the quantity for the virtual disk. And then when ready, click Next. Next is to select the disk pool where the virtual disk will be created from. You should see the disk pool that we just got done creating in the previous step in the list. Highlight the pool and click Next to proceed. The last screen will present additional advanced options, but for now, just click Finish. Now that we have a functional virtual disk, it is time to present the new disk to the Windows operating system. To map the volume, open the Virtual Disk section in the tree to the left, right-click on the new virtual disk, and select Serve to Host.
Select the name that represents the local host machine and click Next. This screen shows the pathing details. We will not make any modifications to the pathing scheme at this time. To continue mapping the volume, click on Finish. And now under Paths, we can see that that volume is now mapped to the local host. Now that the volume is mapped, we must prepare it for use with Windows. Open Disk Management, and you will see a new disk in the list. Click Cancel on this screen for now. If you are unsure which disk is the new virtual disk, you can get the index number by clicking on the Data Core Disks node in the tree to the left. This will display the index number which will match the disk number in the Disk Management Utility. And here we see two. OK, Disk 2. Once you find the disk in the Disk Management screen, bring it online, and then initialize it as a GPT disk. Now we can go ahead and create a simple volume, format it, give it a drive letter, Now verify that the newly created disk is visible in Windows Explorer. Now open the Windows Server Manager. We will now install the Hyper-V services. Now click on Manage, Add Roles and Features in the menu dropdown. Click Next until you see the Server Role screen. Now click on the Hyper-V Role. Click on the Add Features button when the Required Features window appears. Click Next. No additional features here, so click Next. Now we begin the Hyper-V role setup. Click Next. Select an adapter to be used as the uplink for the virtual switch, which will be used to connect the virtual machines to the outside world. The virtual machine migration screen we will skip for now, so click Next. Here we will assign the paths for the virtual hard disk files and the virtual machine configuration files to use the new virtual volume that was just created previously. and click Next. When complete, click Install. Now that Hyper-V is installed, a reboot is required. After the reboot, you will be able to install brand new virtual machines on your new Microsoft Hyper-V virtual server. This concludes the Virtual SAN and Hyper-V setup. For more information, please visit our website at www.datacore.com or email us at info at datacore.com.